and sh shite will even let you summon a dragon oh yes so you can actually have a dragon so will you be able to fly that dragon or or will it uh, aid you in the and like uh, combat and fights will it aid you in fights that will be interesting to find out well is it actually a mount or is it like um, uh, a companion pet <laughs> that would be interesting a companion pet dragon shout have a shouts have a cooldown time so there's probably about 30 minute cooldown I'd say it would need to be because they're very powerful probably 10 to 30 minutes confirm dragon shout we've got fus do fus roda force bla force balance push force wave that damages and pushes away on enemies that sounds like ard from uh the Witcher 2, you could push enemies off the edge of uh, uh, platforms and stuff. Hopefully they'll implement that so you can actually push enemies off cliffs and stuff. Because there's huge mountains in Skyrim, so you can really uh, make the best out of that by pushing enemies off cliffs and stuff. And down holes, there's like big chasms uh, inside caves and all. Les Slenus, Ice Flesh Statue. Level 2, summons a wave of ice crystals. Level 3, freezes and traps enemies in a block of ice. Nice. Looks like uh, the opposite of uh, in World of Warcraft, you have the mage, Ice Tomb. You can actually Ice Tomb a, an enemy. <laughs> That's pretty hilarious. Sturin Ba'o, Storm Lightning Wrath. Summons a lightning storm to damage nearby enemies with lightning. So that'll be like an area of effect lightning uh, effect. So you summon a lightning cloud, it's like Thor. That, that's like Thor's lightning, it's pretty cool. Yold Tor Kren, Fire Inferno Sun, breathes fire upon enemies, nice, like a dragon's breath. Um, Tilled Chloe, Time Sand Eternity, slows down time all around the player, that's nice, so it's like a bullet time if you wanna, uh, if you're in trouble, you wanna get out of trouble, you just uh, slow down time, so you can get in the right position or else you can get out of the way. Or you can run away even. Uh, lane, what, what, what? Whirlwind sprint grants the player the ability to sprint at incredible speeds. Nice, that's like a uh, quick travel sort of. Uh, something, something, Dova summons dragon. Whoa, summons a dragon that aids the player. Hmm, so it's actually a companion that aids you. So it's not. I don't think it's going to be like a mount. I'm doubtful it's going to be a mount. It'll be very awesome if it's a mount. I mean, a dragon mount. People have actually made a mod for that. There is a dragon mod in uh, Oblivion. You can now uh, have a dragon flying mount, so that'll be very interesting if we do get a flying mount. Something 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 teleport teleports the player behind the enemy. Ooh, that could be useful. So you can backstab them with your dagger perhaps. Elemental Fury, shot at your weapon and you deal damage faster. Shot at your weapon. Go faster, damn it! Yeah, it's like a, that's the kind of like uh, shamans in the World of Warcraft, the shamans, what do you call it? Heroism? Heroism? That was for the a lance or blood fury for the horde. Finzi, Gron, Fade, Spurt, Bind, allows you to become immune to damage for a short period of time, so it's like a shield. However, you'll be unable to fight. So you can run away probably, but you won't be able to fight, so it's kind of useful if you get into bad, bad trouble. And you want to get out of there. AI NPCs and creatures. New updated Radiant AI. So AI NPCs and creatures. New updated Radiant AI. You won't find townspeople loitering aimlessly in town squares anymore. So you'll actually be doing stuff like uh, working, like you saw as you went into Riverwood. You saw the guy working on his logs and stuff. Each NPC performs tasks that make sense in their environment. So he was a logger. So he was doing his task. He's uh, carrying out his actual job so it'll be people who are actually uh, working, doing their stuff or else they're out of work, they're in the inn having a drink, having a laugh chatting with each other or else they'll be in their house sleeping or else uh, chilling out or eating to impart the towns and cities with a greater sense of life, Bethesda has populated them with mills, farms and mines that gives the NPCs believable task to occupy their day that's awesome that's like such 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 immersion into the game as such bringing such depth into the game such immersion so you're it's like you're actually in the world that's what i love in these games i love the immersion factor and the deeper the immersion the better the game for me the improved radiant ai technology is also more aware of how our citizens should act or react to your actions 
So as you perform tasks for them or terrorize them by ransacking their homes, the NPCs develop feelings for you. So if you if you're good friends with a particular if you if you if you're like uh, nasty to them, if you uh, steal their stuff and stuff like uh, and stuff, um, then they won't. They're obviously not like you, and they won't. They won't want to speak to you even. But if you if you help them out with tasks and stuff, they'll be more friendly towards you, and they'll help you out even. That'll, that'll be very very awesome. If you're good friends with a particular NPC and barge into his house during the middle of a night, uh, during the middle of the night, he may offer you lodging rather than demand you leave the premises. That's awesome. I mean, in, in Oblivion, they always ask you to leave if you weren't supposed to be in their house. Um, even if you were like maxed 100, their dispos disposition to you, they were like 100, they loved you, and you barged into their house, they just tell you to get out. But in this case, they'd offer you lodgings because you're like their friend, so it makes total sense there. If you swing your weapon near an NPC, knock items off their dinner table, or try to steal something of value, they react with an appropriate level of hostility, given their prior relationship to you. That's awesome. Haha. <laughs> if you drop an item near the ground, oh my god, if you drop an item on the ground near NPCs, they will react to them as well. Such as a child might try to give you the sword back, oh my god, two men will fight over it, or someone might even try, even try to kill you with it if they dislike you. That is awesome. So it's like they're reacting to every single action you do, every single item you drop. Or they might even take it if they think it's, it's a gift. That'll be, that'll be amazing. When NPCs think or they see or hear something, they go into an alert state. Instead of instantly attacking you, players will, with a higher sneak level, will have more time to duck back around the corner or find sanctuary in the shadows. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So it's making it more organic, obviously, which is excellent. It's, it's making it more like an actual uh, lively place, an actual living, breathing environment. So that is just awesome. NPCs. When you approach an NPC, they'll engage in dialogue with you while continuing to do their task or making gestures or pacing around, depending on what their personality is. If you kill the shop owner, their family member will inherit the shop and will be angry about you. But will still give you missions, which could then improve your relationship with them. Huh. Main quest givers are essential, so I'm guessing you can't kill them. Like it wasn't oblivion; you had certain NPCs you couldn't kill. You had the crown over them; you couldn't uh, kill those NPCs. You can make friends by doing quests for people, thus making them act differently towards you. They might even join you on an adventure. That's pretty cool. So if you make friends, they can actually join you. And help you out so it's like if you if you come across a quest that's too hard for you to complete you just make friends with a couple of people and they can they can uh, come with you on the, on the mission and help you out so you'd have to make friends with uh, some warriors obviously as opposed to some trump but I'm not sure if it actually works exactly like that I'm pretty sure it doesn't it's probably specific to specific to specific quests obviously uh, main, male and female characters Will have some different animations and beast races will have unique animations there are npc children now that's that's a first i wonder if you can kill children because in most games in fact in all games i've ever seen you couldn't kill children like in world of warcraft you can't kill the children even if you're if you come in the stormwind you can't kill the, the children if you're a horde you couldn't kill the children so i wonder will they allow us to kill children and Skyrim? Probably not. I don't know why they don't, they're just like another human, but something that's just too taboo to do in games, unfortunately. I mean, in Fallout you couldn't kill the children. Uh, you know, the, the guys who were underground, they were like the little gang of children. You couldn't kill them even though they're very, very annoying, and I wanted to. <laughs> you couldn't do it. Oh well. Hopefully in Skyrim, but I doubt it. Even minor NPCs have much more complexity and depth compared to Oblivion. Because you then you could be super evil if you could tell, kill children. That's like the most evil thing you can do, isn't it? Almost. So that's good. Even minor NPCs have much more complexity and depth compared to Oblivion. So it's like real people in real situations with real uh, their own personal identity, their own personal personality, and that affects how they interact with you. And it also 
also how you deal with them affects how they deal with you. So it's like real life, obviously. Although it's not real life. But you get the idea, it's more immersive. You can persuade various random NPCs to accompany you and they feel like fleshed out interesting companions. Good, like in a... I suppose they took a lot of these elements from Fallout 3, they had a lot of companions who were fleshed out and interesting, like uh, you had Manny, the, the ghoul uh, mechanic who accompanied you, he had a lot of personality. So hopefully it's going to be like that in uh, Skyrim, it'll be very good if it is. There are bards and taverns who play tunes and you can pay them to play another tune, that's pretty cool. Like a jukebox, like the jukebox is in a Fallout again. So a lot of these elements they took from other games they've done. And they, they obviously twisted it to make it uh, appropriate for a medieval sort of game. Not like a futuristic sort of game, which Fallout is. Uh, you can hire companions to join in your adventures. That's that's another element taken from Fallout. Like New Vegas, you could hire the guy who's standing outside the, the casino district. You could hire him to protect you. Although that was kind of limited, it only lasted until... Uh, you find out something about him. That, that was the aim of the quest. You had to find out something about him. You can have anim animal companions, so you can have like a dog, so you can be like a hunter. Uh, that'll be very interesting. Mike the Liar is back. Who's that? I don't know. Maybe from... must be from uh, Morrowind, I guess. Creatures on Muds. Confirmed creatures. Zombies. They were in Oblivion. Drugger. That's good. Skeletons. Trolls. Giants. Ithrius. Spirit. Giant spiders, dragons, dragons, yes, good. That's new. There've never been uh, dragons in the, the Elder Scrolls series, as far as I know. Uh, wolves, horses, although they weren't talked about, they weren't uh, present. Wolves, horses, elks. Hopefully there's some dwarves or dweamer, because I have never seen a dweamer in Elder Scrolls either. Although I've seen the dweamer uh, ruins. And they have dweamer armor, like, so can't we see some dweamer, please? Elks, mammoths, saber-tooth cats, Dweamer. Oh, Dweamer Centurion Spheres? What is that? Dweamer Centurion Spheres? That's weird. That must be like, uh, what do you call it? The rock golems that the dwarves have? The golems, yeah, that must be what they are. Uh, dogs, skeevers, boars, rabbits, forkers, glowworms, bees. Bees? Awesome. We've got bees. Quarks, bugs, luna moths. Spriggans, mud crabs, oh yes, mud crabs, of course. Bats, oh, we've got bats. Foxes, frost andriot, ice golems, oh, salmon. Salmon? Really? Salmon? We have salmon and vampires. Hopefully, we get birds because that's one thing that was missing from the previous uh, Elder Scrolls games the birds. You could hear the birds, but you could never see the birds. I always wanted to see, like, in the, they had these in the Witcher 2, they had crows sitting on the ground, and you could fire into the crows and kill them. Like in Half-Life you had the seagulls sitting down and you could shoot the, the seagulls, that's always a nice... It adds depth to the game, it adds realism to the game, it adds another dimension to the game. You can like bird watch, you can shoot birds, you can just have have a laugh chasing after a chicken or something. Like in, uh, what was it? And Fable they had that, the kicking the chicken, the little mini game, which was awesome. Just adds another nice little layer of depth to the game, you know. Every little detail adds another element to the game, it adds more depth to the game, it adds more uh, immersion into the game. And little details can make or break a game, really. Uh, most great games have a lot of little details, 